Welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Today is video number three of our making of a book series. So if you haven't seen videos one and two, you might want to pop back and check those out. This video is going to make a lot more sense if you have watched the first two videos. But what we're doing is I am walking you through um, how my new book came to be. That book is going to be coming out, releasing to quilt shops and to the public in just a few weeks. So as I was working through my bookmaking process, I recorded this series of videos so that I could share a behind the scenes look with all of you guys as I was making and designing everything that went into the book. So today, what I'm going to be sharing with you are the actual designs that I have designed for the book. Now, um, I've been designing quilts for probably about 15 years or so, and so I have quite a large library of quilt designs that I can pull through at any time when I am needing something for a new project. Some of them would be designs that um, didn't work with some of my fabric lines or if I was working on another project with somebody else um, I've worked with magazines and other fabric companies and and different books so in that process I design a lot of things that never get used so some of these designs are ones that work perfect for this book and some of them are brand new designs um, but let me just start sharing with you what we've got going on. I have all my, my patterns down here laying in front of me, which is why I keep looking down, but let's just dive right in. So one of the categories was the one made with fabrics you've been hanging on to. And in my last video, I didn't tell you guys this, but as I was writing up my book proposal, I liked the idea of using the one with fabrics you've been hanging on to, the one made with scraps, um, kind of that the one title uh, before each of the categories because it reminded me of the titles of friends are any of you guys friends fans all of those episodes are like the one where um, Ross says Rachel or the one where you know whatever happened so as I was thinking through this idea in my head I had that that thought and I thought well that's cute that that just makes me smile so that's why they're all the one that so we'll just work down through and I'll kind of show you what I've got the first one was the one made with fabrics you've been hanging on to. And this is the design I came up with for that. And I'm going to be using fabrics from Lella Boutique from her Nest line of fabric. I actually have a couple different pre-cuts that I have had for a number of years. And so I'm going to be using those fabrics to piece this quilt. And I'm also gonna be bringing in um, another fabric for the border from one of her more recent lines and I think that's just going to be really fun. So that is one of the designs. I designed mostly an electric quilt which is a um, computer quilt design program and it is really easy. There's a little bit of a learning curve. Um, if you are new to electric quilt they have a lot of good tutorials and information and I really would suggest that you would kind of go through the helps and tutorials that they've provided because there is a bit of a learning curve but once you master it it's so helpful to be able to import your fabrics you can bring your fabric scans right into the program and design your projects using the fabrics you're actually going to be using for the projects that makes it so nice to be able to see exactly what that is going to look like when it's a quilt. Then I also use Illustrator. Um, some quilts are just easier for me to do up in Illustrator, so I use that as well. But Electric Quilt gets most of my work done for me. Uh, so let's just move on to another one. Another category was the one made of scraps. That is this one right here. And I'm gonna do it kind of in those colorways like you see, but it's all gonna be scrappy. Each block will be made of two colors, but those two colors are gonna have a lot of different fabrics within each color. So that's gonna be a fun scrappy one. Let's see, we have the one you made for a friend. This one is so fun. So this one uses Springbrook, which I actually have these fabrics up on my shelf right now because as I am filming this video, those fabrics are just now getting into quilt shops, which means they will have been in quilt shops for about a year when you guys are seeing them. But these are the fa exact fabrics I'm gonna be using in this quilt here. The fun thing about this quilt that just tickled me as I was designing it is that you make one quilt and then using the cutoffs from this quilt, you can make another quilt. So because this is the one made for your friend, 
it reminded me of those you know those little friendship necklaces that maybe you guys had when you were in elementary school or junior high a little heart where it would it was split and then you got to keep one and you gave one to your friend that's what this quilt reminds me of you have one that you're making for a friend and then you have the other half of it that you get to keep for yourself so that, that sort of thing just makes me so tickled and happy when, when it works out that way. So that is the one made for a friend. Next up, what is this one? This one is the one with the minky back. Remember I said my family loves the coziness of a minky back? So this is the one with the minky back. And I'm gonna do this one in all like grays and blacks and then a white background. And I'm just gonna collect these from quilt shops. I don't have these fabrics yet. I'm gonna collect them and I love a good excuse to go fabric shopping. So this is gonna be my fabric shopping excuse quilt, I suppose. But um, that's gonna be a lot of fun for that one. The one with the minky back. Uh, the one made with my favorite quilt block. I mentioned that this was the Ohio Star. So this is just a simple Ohio star quilt. I'm gonna do this one in apricot and ash fabrics. And I think that's just gonna be so fun. I'm gonna be using all Moda fabrics for all the quilts in the books. I love Moda, obviously. They are a fantastic company. And so I'll be using all Moda fabrics for the quilts in the book, which is really fun. I use, a lot of the times I'm just using my own fabrics, which I love doing, but it's really fun to get to use the fabrics from your mode of friends. So that's what this book gets to do. The next one is the one my grandma made. My grandma made me a, sim a quilt very similar to what you see here and she didn't use a pattern for it and um, she just wanted to use a layer cake very efficiently um, using the Lulu Lane fabric line and so I've been asked because I've shared that quilt um, it's been published in a magazine a picture of it and I've shared it on social media and I've been asked um, do you have a pattern for the quilt and I don't she didn't have a pattern so I thought I will write up a pattern I'm gonna do it with a jelly roll and I changed out the borders a little bit differently from how she did it but now there will be a pattern for this quilt and I think I'm gonna use At Home by Bonnie and Camille for this quilt. I think that looks really pretty. I had done it up in one of their other lines too. This one right here, but I ended up liking At Home a little better. I think this one is Sunday Stroll. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. And I'll probably just need to write that down in the comments, but I think that's what that one is. But what I really liked was the At Home. That's what I plan to use for that. Because of my timeline for these projects, um, so I'm signing my contract, which I just signed last time I talked to you in February, and I need to have everything turned in by June 1st. That's my deadline. So I have just a few months to do all of the design work and write up all of the patterns, and that means I really need to work with fabrics that are available right now, unless it's something that I already currently own. So it limits me a little bit, but there are always so many good Moda fabrics available right now. And it's really been a lot of fun choosing the fabrics that I wanna use for this book. The next one is the one you made for Christmas. This was actually a quilt that I designed a number of years ago and I've just never made it. And I plan on using, I'm not sure if I'll use just, I plan on using just the one green shade and then I might use in this design, there are a couple prints in the red, but they all look very similar. So I don't know if I'll use just two fabrics, a red and a green, or if I'll do the reds a little bit scrappy, but that's the design. And for this one, I plan just to visit my local quilt shop and I will choose the fabrics there. So I don't know exactly what fabrics they're going to be. Next up is this one. This is um, the one you made using fat quarters. And this is a fig tree line of fabric. This is, I think, Strawberries and Rhubarb is the name of this line. And I love working with fig tree fabrics, so any excuse to sew with some of Joanna's fabrics is a lot of fun. Uh, next quilt, the one made with a layer cake. And this one uses um, Happy Days by Sherry and Chelsea. Again, just another great duo of Moda designers. I'm excited to make that one. Their fabrics are also happy. Happy days, right? It's the name of the line. Um, another one using fig tree fabrics. This uses scarlet and sage 
This is going to be the one that's hand quilted. This design is a little bit smaller since I'm going to be doing the hand quilting on it and I have that small time frame. I knew that I was going to need something not too big of a project so that I have time to finish it. But I think this will work just great. And I'm going to hand quilt down. It's just going to be a simple cross hatch, a diagonal cross hatch and a big stitch quilt. So it's not going to take as much time to do that hand quilting. The next one is the one that uses your favorite colors. So I'm gonna do this in corals and grays. It's not gonna be super scrappy, but a little bit scrappy. Um, you can see like kind of the grays back here and the corals, I love those shades. So that's kind of what I have in mind for this one. I had also done this up in that at home collection by Bonnie and Camille in like reds and blues and grays, which I thought was really pretty as well. I don't tend to use navy a lot, and so sometimes it's fun to bring it in. But in the end, my love of the gray and coral won out. So that's what I will do that one in. And then the last one is the one you made for a grandbaby, or it could be just for a new baby. A new baby is probably how I'll word that because um, there's a lot of new babies that we oftentimes have into come into our lives. It doesn't have to be just a new grandbaby. It could be any new baby that you're welcoming into your life. So this is the design for that. And this is um, a Bonnie and Camille line. It's that same one, Sunday Stroll, I think is the name of this one. And it was, is going to work really well with a lot of different fabrics because of that center square. You could easily switch this up and showcase a little boy line of fabric if you wanted to do something with, with airplanes or something with cars or, um, you know, even using something that's a, uh, less printed like homespuns or flannels or something like that would be really pretty too. You don't have to go super boy or super girl. You can keep it gender neutral if you wanted to as well. So. That is for the new baby. Those are the 12 designs for the book. And I am excited to get working on those. I am going to be utilizing sample makers. Um, when you heard that time frame, you probably thought, my goodness, this girl is never gonna have time to sew all those quilts in that amount of time. And you're right, <laughs> I wouldn't have time to sew them all. So the next thing that I will need to do, I am in the process of writing up all of the patterns. Once the patterns are written, the fabric along with the patterns will go to those sample makers and they will be making the quilts um, for the book, which is wonderful because then it just, it allows for that quick turnaround and I'm so appreciative of my sample makers. They're just wonderful. So once I have the fabrics all here, there are some that I still need to get. I think what I will do is for the next video, I will show you some of those fabrics in person because the, the mock-ups are great and they show us you know what the quilt is going to look like but seeing the fabrics in person is even better so next time i will be back to show you you know some of those fabrics in person share the fabric lines make sure i've got all those names of the fabric lines right so i can talk a little bit more about that and we'll go from there so thank you so much for joining me today i hope you're enjoying this series if you are i would love if you'd leave me a comment below and give me a follow and i will catch you again next time thanks so much